So here we have been saying for years that modern Rolex does not look back. They don't look at their vintage four-digit models for inspiration to really grab that nostalgia and create a design that's faithful to that past model. Well, that's out of the window. Now, I'm a bit late to the party talking about this watch because I've been enjoying the race all weekend. I'm a huge fan of Enduros. I've been enjoying the 24-hour of Le Mans all my life for as long as I can remember. Don't believe me? Here's some evidence. This is a bit before my time, but the winning 1989 Sauber Mercedes team. Or the 1982 winning trilogy of Rothmans Porsches. Number one, Derek Bell's car just sold at Sotheby's this past weekend. And this year's race was incredible. Seeing Ferrari, Toyota, Porsche, Cadillac battling it out together. It was a childhood dream to watch this happening live. And for Ferrari, 58 years since winning Le Mans in 1965 for their first entry in the hypercar class, and they take the trophy for the 100th year of this race. This is a truly historic moment. And while all of this racing was going on, Rolex decides to casually release one of the best modern Daytonas that we have ever seen. Go figure. So Rolex gives us a commemorative Daytona, but this Daytona in particular is a very unique and special one. Not for all the reasons that are blatantly obvious. We all know that they have never made a custom piece like this before, with such a direct inspiration from past models front and center. Beyond what we see on the outside, there are many layers to this watch, and this is something that I never thought I would ever say about a modern Daytona, but it's true. As an enthusiast of Le Mans, who has watched this race for as long as I can remember, this watch really speaks to me. And I wanted to talk about the Daytona not only as a watch enthusiast, but also as an enthusiast of the event and what this piece truly symbolizes. And I think that in the rush to get the many articles, videos, and the coverage of this piece out there, many have missed the subtleties that make this particular Daytona so special. And that's what I want to dig into. We forget that the Rolex Cosmograph had a very rocky origin story. And in order to drum up interest about this piece, they tried many different things. They tried renaming it multiple times, inadvertently creating the Yachtmaster origin story I'll put in the top corner of the screen. The Cosmograph was not a popular watch in the 1960s, primarily, I think, because there were so many more successful pieces around this time, more established designs, more established brands and watches. The Omega Speedmaster, the Hoya Carrera, these two were exceptionally popular around this time. Bearing in mind there were many other outliers, like the Breitling Top Time, like the Nevada Grenchen Chronomaster, the Anycar Sherpograph. Rolex had big plans that this chronograph was going to go to the moon, so they called it the Cosmograph. We all know how that story ended. But I think another important reason why this watch was not successful is when you look at the Rolex landscape, they've always been known for waterproof watches, waterproof cases. From the Oyster Perpetual all the way to the GMT, the Submariner, these watches were all known for their screw down crowns. And from it, they were marketed and advertised as some of the best waterproof watches in the world. The earliest Daytonas with their pump pusher cases, they didn't really do that very well. And so the Rolex customer would look elsewhere. They would buy the Datejust, they would buy 1675 GMTs, 5513 Submariners. And in the early years of the Cosmograph's life, it was going to be called the Le Mans to pay tribute to this historic race. Rolex deeply wanted to be involved in this racing culture and tried their utmost to segue themselves into the European marketplace with such a name. But what was soon found out is that the name Le Mans would not sell in America because no one in the States really knew what Le Mans was. So in order to drum up that American interest, their largest market at the time, they named it after the most historic American race, the Daytona. Daytona 500. So what initially was going to be called the Rolex Le Mans became the Rolex Daytona. Now Rolex and the historic 24 hours of Le Mans, their history together is not as long as we might think. The partnership between these two brands only began officially in 2001. But over the last 20 plus years, these two names have been interwoven. And this timely tradition that the overall winners in the highest class being LMP1 or now known as the hypercar class, those three drivers get awarded a Daytona. And all of these models have an engraving on the case back per year. Contrary to popular belief, the drivers are not being awarded this very special centenary Daytona, but it looks like they were given a 116500, just a typical black dial model with an engraved back. And no doubt that these three winning Daytonas will fetch huge amounts at auction one day. Now, realistically, the watch that we're talking about today, it's a white gold Daytona. It has a black ceramic bezel, a black sunbrush dial, white solid sub dials, and a red highlight on the 100. 
but here it's very much the execution that counts and the minute details that make the difference. Rolex has never made a custom watch like this before. And we can see very quickly by looking at the subdials, referring to the reference 6240 Paul Newman, one of the earliest, one of the least popular cosmographs ever made at the time. And what I like most about choosing this inspiration is that Newman's Daytona pretty much made what the modern Daytona is today, as far as a success story goes. But it gets even better than that. The brand has reworked the movement so that the subdial on the left hand side counts 24 hours instead of 12, making it Rolex's first official 24 hour endurance racing chronograph. Try and say that five times. Talking about its inspiration and its tires, it has a good link to the 6263 Big Red, but the solid white subdials really seal it. And I've played around with a few renders of this watch to see how we could have changed it even more. Black hands on the subdials instead of silver, just making it that little bit more legible. And then I also looked at the idea of adding a white minute track around the outside instead of solid black, just to play it even closer to the reference 6240. I also rotated the red 100 on the bezel around so that the wearer can actually read it. So taking everything that I have said in, why is it that the 100th anniversary of Le Mans, this centenary Daytona, why is it so special? I think simply because there's this wonderful cyclical aspect around this piece that we have never seen on a Rolex before, commemorating the original race and where it came from. It's using some of the original inspiration taken from some of their earliest Daytonas. But the most important aspect is that Rolex had this vision and this dream that they were going to be a part of Le Mans. So much so that in the early years, they wanted to name their watch after the event. Now, all these years later, they are not only the official timekeepers of the event, inextricably linked, but they're able to create a watch that commemorates such an important milestone. This watch, in more ways than one, represents what the Daytona is in the modern era and how far it has come from its early days. It also signifies that Rolex does care a lot about their earliest models. And I think in future, we're going to see a lot more of this design in fusion. But I think to sum up this watch entirely, it is a lot more than what you see on the surface. And we could say that in a small part, it has made the headlines and is, in some way, for us enthusiasts, as historically important as the 100th race itself. I love an origin story when the failure turns out to be the success and the cosmograph is one of the best in this respect. It's so great to see this piece expertly handled and it, it does fill me with a lot of hope and optimism that we're going to see these old designs creeping in from now on. The brand is starting to infuse old with new but they're not hitting you over the head with it and that's something really important. Safe to say the future of this cosmograph Daytona is bright and that we will never be able to wear this exact watch but nevertheless... Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.